Hey guys, before we get into the show, I really wanted to say, remind you to hit the subscribe button. Next, give us a like. Give us a like, make a comment, and... And thank you for being here. And we love it. And thanks for being a part of our life and making us a part of your life. Enjoy the episode, friends. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Father Knows Something. This is the uh, show number 1113. 1112. 1112? I think so. 112. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. But this is the show, the first show we're doing right after the concert that we had in um, Irvine. Concert. Concert, yes. I did sing actually there a little. I did. I did actually sign socks, uh, the T T H T concert. Concert? <laughs> you got to stop saying concert, dude. It's a show. The THT show. show. You know. Show. Anyway, so we got the uh, bird socks on that you will see on Patreon as well. I yep. like it. And uh, the theme on this one, Justin, tell us what we got. Considering the fact that much of the time I've spent in this condo and actually much of the time recording, mm -hmm. there's often uh, a disturbance in the form of neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so. Oh, you mean upstairs? Yes. No. You mean. And it extends beyond just being in here. It's kind of the whole, the whole property. So. Because of the same neighbors. So many bad neighbors. It's no same neighbors. It's all the and same ones. Long. There's a couple different ones and yes. they're all. But the ones above us, all one family, they're four kids. Yeah, and but they... there's more. Yeah. Oh, so really? We got more? There's a lot of neighbors here. Yeah. Well, we only have we only have nine units, so there's only the eight other neighbors. You know. Okay. Anyways, Regardless, so go our ahead. theme is neighbors. neighbors. So problems with the neighbors. Okay. Before we get into it, though. Yes, ma'am. I did find a note from someone named Tori. Tori was at the Seattle show. Yes. And didn't quite hear you when you were speaking into the room, probably because you were doing it without a microphone. You can never yell. Always use a mic. I've been telling you this. Yes. But I will let you know that I was really, really, really excited to see you. I listen to Father Knows since it started, and me and my husband enjoy listening to you. My husband says he loves your calm demeanor. Haha. <laughs> I really hope for you to know how much I appreciated you coming to the Seattle show. It really made my year, to be honest. You also got me an autograph, and I got a picture with you. I'll treasure it forever. Tori, thank you so much. And can I can I mention something that I that I learned myself at the show? Hmm. That people in line at the show, by the way, it was very cold outside, but people that were there were sharing with me that my voice to them is very soothing. Hmm. And one woman said, I gave birth a year ago. Oh, that was at Portland. Yeah, it was Portland. And then she said that she is uh, pregnant in the third in her third month. Mm -hmm. Second baby. Second baby. And she said when she was going through childbirth a year ago that it was so tough that the only thing that got her to be soothed, her husband played <laughs> our, our episodes. So crazy. And so my answer to her was, well, you know, call me in, you know, in, in three months. Well, <laughs> also that kid better be a fan. If yeah. you come out and that's the first thing you're exposed to. You would think, that, you would think. It's called Im imprinting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time I hear that word, though, I just think Jacob from Twilight. So it was really very cool when that happened. I was just, it made my night. Yeah, just, she sat front row at the Portland show. It was just the, the whole experience because as you know, I was not planning to be up in that, uh, at that Neck those of the shows. Woods. No, yeah. and how it just happened and it was just, it was a very warm and wonderful experience to see the love that everyone had. And so that's what, that, that's what I feed on is your yeah, love. I love it. Well, just goes to show, you never know what show dad is going to pop up at. Um, the tour has been so, so fun so far. We do have a couple tickets left for Nashville's second show and Chicago's second show, which dad is likely coming to Chicago. I think, I think Chicago's for sure. Yes, I am. Um, and Nashville, we'll see. But come on out. It's so fun. It's been amazing getting to meet you all. But let's get into this, uh, okay, this I'm theme ready. Justin put together. Let's go. Boom, 
Are you okay? That was good. <laughs> no. I don't even think that's your song. It was something like that. What is, how does my son go? I, I heard the resemblance. You did. Okay. Yeah, you did okay. okay. Read away, Blondie. So since they're not reading, I'm letting you guys know that... Uh, I'm ready. It's a little sad in my household because they moved out. They went to their home. And uh, I'm an empty nester now. Yeah, now we have a whole new set of neighbors up at our house. Good. I feel like you'll end up living in the garage eventually, though. Don't worry. <laughs> in the garage? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, we'll turn it into a nice little casita. I don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to be right here, right where I'm at. We'll see. My husband and I bought a condo in 2017. We love where we live. However, our neighbor has started to cause some issues. Our neighbor, Ashley, fake name, has two kids, two dogs, and her husband. Initially, everything was fine. My husband and I are shy, so we didn't interact much and are friendly in passing. Now that we have all lived near Ashley and her family, things are starting to become too much. I noticed that every time I walk my dog, which is four times a day at random, Ashley would pop out of her door almost every time I came up or down the stairs. I'm always nice and try to end the conversation fast, but she is known in our building to keep people in conversation for hours. Eventually, I asked her why she was always in the hall when I was coming up or leaving my unit, and she openly admitted to me that she watches through her peephole and listens near her door for keys jingling, waits by the mailroom and elevators so she can chit-chat with her neighbors. The next weird thing is she kind of stalked my husband's family. One of the times I got caught in her chit-chat sessions, she mentioned my husband's two sisters and which schools they went to and that she knew someone from their school. Later, my brother-in-law mentioned to us that our neighbor bought a lawnmower from him off Facebook Marketplace. Those instances might not be that weird, but we live in a condo. Why do you need a lawnmower from my brother-in-law who lives almost two hours away? Weird, right? The final straw? Other neighbors and I have noticed cockroaches right in front of her door. I noticed while she just so happened to come out of her unit how messy and cluttered their condo was. I was shocked. The clutter was so intense and I could only see into their kitchen so I cannot even imagine the rest. Now I think they have created an infestation in their unit. I talked with our association, but because Ashley and her husband own the unit, there's only so much they can do. I have lost sleep over protecting our home from these pests. Now when I see her pop out of her door, I can't even imagine being nice. I get so angry. I know that some of the behaviors she displays are mental health issues, but I feel like my husband and I are going insane. I cannot stop thinking about how they have two dogs and two children living in there. I don't know how to help or what to do. We are literally thinking about moving. Ideal outcome, I really want to stay in our condo, but I don't know if it's worth it. Anything else, we can afford to move, but don't want this to be the reason why. I do know that in some, every HOA has the CCNRs. And I would start by reading the CCNRs to see what they talk about with infestation and what you see. And all you really can do is report it to the HOA management company and say, you know, we're having an infestation. And, you know, you please go into all the units and make sure it's, it's taken care of. You know, we have bug control. That's about it. I mean, otherwise... I don't know what they say about dogs. I don't know what they say about, you know, what you can have. You know, I mean, you know, I live in an HOA and I'm not always the happiest. I'm not happy. I was happy for seven, you know, we've been here for 20 years. For 17 years, I was happy. Then we got a new crew and things change and I'm no longer happy. I got neighbors that, you know, don't have, they changed the floor before I took over this place. And no one complained about it after a three-month period of complaining or six months limit. So I'm stuck with, with the people upstairs. They don't have soundproofing or detonating in their floor. 
And you guys, we talk about it. We have four people that, you know, they have four kids and two parents and there's noise all day long and they it don't sounds, care. No, it sounds like they're hopping around their house in thick, chunky rollerblades at all times. And there's no talking to these people. No. They, there's no response. There's no neighborly love at all. No, they were flushing their diapers and dirty wipes down the toilet, which then caused my toilet to overflow. Oh no, not just my toilet, my bathtub. My bathtub overflowed with other human shit. And then the HOA said, oh, well, best of luck. We got a plumber coming in three days. Yeah, it was- it was, And we got stuck with a $1,500 bill. So it's not fun. So HOAs can suck. So, you know, sometimes you, you, if you really feel that you can't live within that environment, it's best to really go find a different place and, and live in happiness. That's all you really can do. We, we, we live in a place that if it's not, not great, we have the freedom to get up and walk away. We shouldn't have to. Let's per yeah, let's pretend because I know, I know she does say we can afford to move, but let's pretend they couldn't because I think the reality is for a lot of people, it's not affordable to move. It's not easy, especially if you were able to buy a home during the crazy mortgage rates of 2% locked in or 4%, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, some people got. If you are in one of those situations, you can't afford to move or you just really don't want to. So then where do you go with that dealing with a neighbor like I, this? I don't know what the rules are with keeping your homes and what goes on behind your door. Um you know, regarding hoarders and things that people that just don't know how to keep places clean and, you know, dog feces and all the other stuff that goes on. I don't know, you know, you, again, you're going to have to go read the CCNRs and really see what rights you do have uh, as an occupant of your condo and what the, the protocols are to, to work around it. And if law doesn't work in your favor and CCNRs don't work in your favor, you're and you don't like it, I guess the only thing you really can do is is move. If they if you can't talk to them, I mean, she seems like she's trying to get everyone's attention to be nice and sweet and wonderful. Yeah. You know, maybe you guys have a you know an HOA meeting and say, look, you know, we have some things going on here. Can can we all, you know, talk about how to live amongst each other? You know, it you you are living in communal living, which means that you have to be able to deal with your neighbors and if you wish to. I know that. Since you know the three year issue that I had years ago, three years ago, I just, I I just re, you know the the people that I that I've loved for all the years, I'm very friendly with. The people I want nothing to do with, I I pretend they don't exist, and that's not me. I'm a guy that likes to be friendly with everybody, but I do know that sometimes you just have to, you know, make your lines and your 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 boundaries. I guess. Yeah, it's kind of hard with this one because it seems like. Not only are there maybe health concerns, mm -hmm. um, but it seems like this neighbor is also stalking her and her husband's family. So I'm just like, I'm really flabbergasted by this one. Yeah, I just, I, there's times in the day where I just literally don't want to interact with a single human. And, you know, leaving in the morning, I, oh God, I just, or every time you come home, you just try and like tiptoe into your place because you don't want to end up in this conversation. I think if the bugs are taken care of and everything else, you know, gets back to normal, quote unquote, I would get to the point where I'd have to just tell her like, listen, I am, I just don't have time. I don't have time to talk right now. And once you kind of start setting that boundary a little bit, because it would be hard at first, but- you just, you can't, what you about, can't keep doing that. What about being direct and to say, you know, I want, I really, you know, I, I think that you're very sweet and I like your friendliness, but there are some boundaries that I really feel that you've gone beyond. Yeah. And I think that's fair. And you've intruded into some of our privacy and we're private people. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't eventually, you know, whatever we're going to end up at, but you know, you're starting right in and you're, you're, you're literally doing things that are just seems like a little out out of the boundaries. Yeah. And it makes me, it, it, it sets me back. It makes me, it makes me fear you. Yeah. And if that's what, if that's really what you want to, you know, have people feel, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you'd like to have people, you know, to get to know you slowly, 
you know, let it, let it, let it, you know, let's pace it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you look at, you know, maybe where this woman's coming from, she's got two kids, a husband, maybe she's doing it all in her house, can't keep up. There's dog shit. There's cockroaches now. And maybe she's really just looking for a friend, anyone she to does, talk to. She doesn't have time for a friend. She's got shit in her house, cockroaches and a mess. You know, I'm going to try to give a, a little bit of a flip side to it. And I think you could have that conversation and then say maybe, you know, let's grab a coffee one once and when you're let's, done- let's, you know, catch up, get to know each other. But you got to set those boundaries like, hey, you know, it's a little weird that you bought a lawnmower from my brother-in-law two hours away. You know, there's just been some things that have been a little weird. Oh, it's just a coincidence. But I would say, I think you have steps, right? And then we'll we'll get to the next one. But I think you look at your HOA bylaws, your CCNRs, mm-hmm. whatever you call them. Do you in there have the right to a clean, healthy home? If that's true and you're seeing cockroaches, your building could do an assessment to determine if there's an infestation, mm-hmm. which then a surveyor would go into their unit to check all the units. You read, might have to get it tented. The CC, read the CCNRs. Yeah, but you have to read your your bylaws. Then you can bring that up to the HOA. Like, hey, we might have to get our whole building tented. If there's a cockroach infestation, it affects everyone here. The health of our community, the investment and the equity of our properties, there's a lot there. Then I would also be curious if you could call the health department, make an anonymous report. Mm -hmm. Next, I wish this is where I could phone a friend, a social worker. If you really believe that environment is unsafe, uninhabitable, unclean for those children, you might be obligated to make an anonymous call. Mm -hmm. But maybe reach out and just ask general questions before you do that because I know sometimes CPS getting involved can be not a good thing, but you just got to use your best judgment. Um, But you want to make sure, you know, everyone's safe and healthy and you also are entitled to being safe and healthy. Yeah. Well, that's back down. That's back down to your city ordinances Mm -hmm. and your CCNRs. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's move on to number two. Number two. Before we do number two, should we do a sock check, guys? Sock check. Look at this. We're all wearing socks. I'm wearing happy alpacas. Uh, I am wearing what we call the two. Two can. Two can. Not the three can. Two not, can. Two can. Two can do. Justin? And moo. 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 Justin's got cow socks. Moo. Okay. Sock check over. Here we go. Number two. Number two. Hi, Dad. Hi. Morgan. Justin. I'll get right into it. One of my neighbors lives in a rental. They would leave their dog out all day and night, and it would bark at all hours and wake me up. The owners went out of town for about five days, which meant the dog was left outside for those five days. Oh, fuck. They had someone that would check on the dog, but they wouldn't spend more than five minutes over there. The dog barked all day and night. I work 12-hour shifts and don't think I should have to be miserable just because they can't take care of their pet. I made a complaint to animal control. Some of the nights they were out of town, it was pouring rain, and that poor dog was outside. They got a warning for it. Now, they have chickens. I by no means live in a rural area. It's very much residential, and now I have to listen to a barking dog when it's outside and chickens that cluck nonstop. No. I'm so excited for that, actually. The lady that lives there is a real piece. She's always rude, has never once said hello or been neighborly, and she's usually always yelling at her husband. He'll say hi or wave on occasion in passing. I've tried to go over twice when their car is there, so I know at least one of them is home, and they never answer the door. (laughs) Is it petty to make a complaint about the chickens? No. No. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> we got the answer. No, it's the not. ideal outcome is I'm able to go back to sleeping through the night without old McDonald's farm waking me up. It's <laughs> a good one. I'm I am sure there's ordinances. There's got to be yeah. ordinances back with the city that uh, what is allowed and what is not allowed before they 
you know, you, you got to go by the rules. Yeah. And and let the the laws of the land control the control the problem. Yeah. Because they won't. No. And they're clearly inept. They can't take care of their dog. The poor thing. I'd be yeah. calling animal control nonstop anytime they leave. Mm-hmm. Get that poor thing out of there. People, I just think it's such bullshit when people get a dog and then just keep it outside the dog's entire life. That's not how dogs are supposed to live. Yeah. I mean, it's different when we see like Finland or Norway or something and they if have all their sled dogs and they're doing whatever. So but different. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, what's the point? Those dogs are, they love their job. They love to work. They each have their own little hut. They're well taken care of and they love being outside but well, and they're doing something yeah, every day they're you know? a dog with a job yeah but i think um <laughs> i think the chickens like even our neighborhood it's technically residentially but it's a farmish neighborhood and so you can have chickens there i think you can only have up to 10 chickens total what if we have loud chickens so here's the thing you can only have hens you are not allowed to have roosters. Right, right, right. But so the loud clucking nonstop, I feel like that's all chickens. It They do cluck. Or the girls a little more quiet. The girls are a little quieter. And if they're taken care of properly, I doubt these ones are, they usually go into their little hen house at night. And then they're You chilling, shut yeah. the door. It's and they, safe. And it's they cozy. Read a, and they read a book. Are it's, you going to come hang out with our chickens? Of course. The, chicken, <laughs> the chickens go in there and read a book and everything's great. <laughs> so they just might not be taking care of them. They could have a rooster. But True. I would look up the rules. If you live in a little neighborhood in the residential area. You got to look up the ordinances. Probably not allowed to have chickens. But if they are. You might be out of luck. You got to look up the ordinances. We install sound panels in our coop. We could. Just to, you know, block the yeah, sound. Yeah, we definitely could. You know, I mean, I've I've certainly been around chickens and they do cluck. They, you know, when they're... They, they definitely make noise. I mean, when they're walking around out there doing their thing, but again, <laughs> and in the house. <laughs> We're not having our chickens in the house. No, this we have one chicken in the house right now. Oh, I'm like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> the chicken, the chicken with the head with, with the headsets on over there. Yeah, yeah, that is I. Yeah, so. that that would drive me nuts. We we do have a neighbor, and I've only we've only been living there for a couple weeks now, but we have a neighbor that loves love loves to leave there. Cute little German Shepherd outside, twenty four seven. Outside in the back or the front? In the back, okay. which is right over our wall. And all day, every day. Woo, 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 woo. It, that actually is exactly what it sounds like, kind of. Yeah. All day, that every day. That was pretty good. Nap time. I'm trying to take a nap, you know, 4 p.m. Woo, woo, woo. Nonstop. 7 p.m. still. Woo, woo, woo. So me, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to ask if I can take their dog for a walk. Like, hey, I'm bored. Can I take your dog for a walk? Fuck. Give it some fucking attention. But these people, yeah. they don't answer the door, so you can't you can't even offer that. But next time they're out of town, either take the dog or call animal control. I would, you got to be careful when you start involving yourself by taking the taking somebody's no, dog. No, so, but if it's if it's left alone by itself, unattended for five in days the rain. in the rain, I think animal they control. would justify animal control. Well, yeah, they got their warning. Yeah. I don't know how many warnings they get. Animal control. Get that dog out of there. Yeah. I'd be looking over the fence every day. When are they gone? When are they gone? Okay. Call them. Check your ordinances. Onward and forward. Okay, we're going the to- The train's next. moving on. Number three. Another one of this week's partners is green light. When you're a parent, you have your fair share of tough conversations with your kids. Really? And one of those tough conversations is money. Really? How do you feel your budgeting is? What? What's that word? Yeah, that's about <laughs> right. Dad doesn't know how to budget. But with green light, you can teach your kids. Or your dad. Or your dad how to budget. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families. You can send your kids instant money transfers, get real-time notifications of spending, manage chores, and automate their allowance. 
for me as a kid, I usually only did chores if there was an incentive involved. And so if I would have grown up with Greenlight, where I get money put on a debit card immediately after a chore, my room would have been spotless. My mom would have been happier and maybe the budgeting would have brushed off on my dad and he would have a savings account right now. Oh, wow. (laughs) Wow. So help your kids build financial literacy and independence by learning to earn, save, and then spend wisely. They get a debit card that they can then go out and use in the real world. So if you're ready to try it for yourself, stop putting off the money talk and start putting your kids on the right path. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash FKS. That's greenlight.com slash FKS to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash FKS. Link is also in the description. No. That was very good how you did that. That's a very, very serious look. Scary. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Hello, Father Knows Something crew. Long time listener, but first time right in. You all give such wonderful advice, and my boyfriend and I could really use your help with a neighbor issue. Here is some important context. We live in a state where medical marijuana is legal, but technically our apartment doesn't allow it. However, you smell it everywhere. We have an upstairs neighbor that is a tad bizarre. He has extreme anger outbursts. He does online gaming and sometimes things get extremely intense. I worked with him closely in the past and he used to get us marijuana before our medical cards came in and have witnessed him, and he has an incredibly short fuse. When we first moved in, he was even nice enough to offer to swap his game room and bedroom to match ours so his gaming wouldn't keep us up at night. The layout makes it to where both of our game rooms are on exterior walls away from other neighbors, so we are literally the only affected party when there was stomping, screaming, cursing, crashing, etc., It would sound like he was tearing his apartment apart sometimes with crashing glass and all. He does live alone, just an FYI. We have always had the same schedules, so the noise was never a problem. We all smoke, so there was never any issues with that. We minded our business and were grateful to have a neighbor that didn't complain about us, ever. Now, the issue. The past two months, something has changed a bit. And that's why we need y'all's help. He plays intensely loud music a good 85% of the day. So loud that sometimes I can tell the song that's playing and I'm able to sing along to it. It does vary the type of music. Sometimes it's heavy guitar bass, sometimes pop, and sometimes spa music, even classical at times. Mm -hmm. I cannot express how loud it is in our game room, living room, and kitchen. Fortunately, it's not noticeable enough in our bedroom to cause issues with sleeping. It's beginning to give my boyfriend a headache some days, though, since it vibrates the walls. I considered messaging him since I still have him in Messenger. However, when I went out to his chat, there was an unread message I didn't see from earlier last year. He asked if we could take his dog out for him because he had a hernia surgery. So now I feel awful and I'm a bit afraid of his temper if I were to ever speak to him again. I feel like I have no right to complain about the music now. We love our apartment, and because we smoke inside, we also don't want to file a complaint, and then he retaliates and tells them about our marijuana. In addition, is it really fair to even complain since his message went unanswered for nearly a year? I feel like we deserve this, so we just suck it up and deal with it, as it could be worse. My boyfriend wants to do something about the noise, but also doesn't know the best solution here. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for everything you all do. You help so many people. I see a two-step solution. Mm. Do you see the same same two-step solution? No, but I'll announce it for you. Step one. Step one. Uh, Get a gift. Walk over there. And say, I am. St- I just opened up my email from a year ago. I am so sorry we didn't see about the dog. Please accept our apology. Yeah. It's a good way to get anyone back on your side. That takes care of that thing if there's any anger. Yeah. Now go home for a little bit. Suffer for another week with some noise. 
And now we have... Step two. Right. We knock on the door when, he, when it's going on and say, I've been having migraines lately. Would you be so kind to try to just keep the music down, just you know, a couple octaves down a little lower? I don't know why I, I feel this way, but maybe you can help me. A couple decibels. A couple decibels. decibels. Mm-hmm. Not so, octave, octaves would put my... Yeah, so well, decibels are down. Octave is just, you know, octaves, right? Octave would be like, you know, chord, a full, full chord set down. That's not the now how would he do that? He can't. You got to go decibels. Right. You would, sorry, you had said octaves in the beginning. I did? Yes. No way. Yes, you did. Roll the tape. Anyways. Uh, yeah, decibel. I mean, <laughs> decibels. I know you, yeah. <laughs> Turn, crank it down, baby. <laughs> I, I have migraines, you know, and maybe, can you help me feel better? Because nothing's working and see if that helps. Yeah. And that might get them to be, not, not go ballistic at you because you did it in how many steps? Two, Two steps. Two steps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that seems pretty fair. I would honestly, I would order a decibel reader mm-hmm. from Amazon no, or you got right on your whatever. Phone. It's on your iPhone. What? Yeah. Decibel reader. Well, that's what I use my watch for. Decibel oh. reader on your iPhone. It's not as, it, I would say, if you want it super precise. I would want to get it accurate. Yeah. Because what I would do, I would also just like, if you do steps one and two and he has a bad reaction, doesn't listen, you are entitled to a certain level of noise in your living space. That's step three. Legally. So you would buy this decibel reader. Yep. You'd start making notes of these Graph it. recordings. Chart it. Chart the date, chart the time, take a picture of the decibel reader, maybe a video with the noise and the reading happening. Yeah, yeah. Start covering your bases because you can then go to him and say, hey, you know, legally the law says we're entitled to, you know, no noise above this level during these times or whatever it is in your city. We're here. We're just, we're getting headaches and we want to be good neighbors. We don't want to razz you, but is there any way like, you know, seeing these levels, you'll change your mind. If that doesn't work, you can either leave or you have a lawsuit. And there have been many, many cases of this where people have won lots of money well, this because is of the apart- damages. It's an apartment building, isn't it? Yeah. So mm. you... you- I would just go to, I would take the decibel, you know, your decibels. Oh no, you're not going the way I thought you were going. And just go to the management. You could also ask for a different unit. Mm -hmm. Like if this unit, like maybe there's a better unit across from him that you can move to, that might be an easier solution where you love your building, you love where you live, but maybe there's a better unit that makes more sense. I, I think I think they they could possibly get very lucky by doing steps one and two. That's well, fingers crossed. And if that doesn't work, step three is cu- hit us back up, and then we'll we'll, we'll yeah. t- <laughs> come to come to group therapy, and we'll uh, we'll hammer it out. We'll go to the next step. It is funny when you're in an apartment, how you tolerate certain things, mm-hmm. and you just deal with it to just get by. I only ever did that because I knew my time was limited. Mm -hmm. And it always like, as soon as the date was set that we're moving out of New York to LA, it was anything that went on. It was just like, you know what? We're going to be out of here in seven, eight months. It just, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you're like, I'm just going to get through it. But it, it's crazy sometimes how much shit, you deal with mm-hmm. I just, just because there's people around you and yeah. above, especially above. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood in Los Angeles and we, our whole block, we really got along for the most part, all very, we were all family. We would Sunday mornings, we would go, you know, we'd select a house and that's where all the families met up for breakfast. It was, we had a pretty good time. We had a you know, pretty, and and those neighbors we have stayed friends with. You know, they're my oldest friends. Yeah, you made fudge with them recently. Yes, we went down for, and yeah. there, and there's some still. I mean, I I have no idea what it looks like in that container, but I I brought fudge home for you, and you never had it. It's in the top shelf in the back. Oh, Let's God, go that's for it. Not good anymore. I don't know. I have to look. Three months later, um, yeah, I think you know 
that's what you ideally want. I would not feel bad about not seeing his message. I don't think I've responded to everyone's congratulations on our engagement yet. Um, sorry if you if you're one of those people. But you know what I mean? Like no one checks social media and messenger nonstop. So don't feel bad about missing that message. Just because We've all you done that. we all have been there. So don't think you are justified dealing with the noise because you accidentally missed his message. Absolutely not. But but use this as a tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well this is this it, And also it's just a, because you sound like a good person and want to a, apologize. It's a blessing of a tool to go knock on that door and not have him pissed at you by coming in and complaining. You're coming in first as as you know, with the olive branch and candy and the sweetness and you're smiling and you say, have a great day and you leave. And then, and then you go, you, you appeal, you, you, you're appealing to not appeal is um, what's the word I'm looking for where you're going to him and you're asking him to help you feel better. Cause you have this migraine that's just pounding and please make it quiet. I think I think steps one and two are going to work really well. Yeah. But keep us posted. But do the migraine. <laughs> you sound like Voldemort. Yeah, well, yeah. What was that? I don't know. Moving along. Going cuckoo. Okay, we're going on number four. One of this week's partners is PXG. Four. If you're a golfer. You know PXG is on a mission to create the most high-quality, high-performance golf clubs in the game. They are bringing that same passion to their new apparel, which can be spotted on Dad right now. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it feels great. It's comfortable. And you know that if you're outside in the heat like you're in the desert, Yeah. not only are you going to shoot cool, you're going to feel cool. It's lightweight, it's breathable, and it's got a really stretchy workout material type fabric. And it's one of those shirts that you could easily wear from the office to the course. Or the course to lunch. Or the course to happy hour. <laughs> That's the one. PXG Apparel has something for everyone. Pants, polos, sweaters, hats, quarter zips, joggers, dresses, and skirts. If you're a tennis girly, a golf girly, a look cute in a matching set girly, there are some amazing women's apparel. But you also said that you're going to take up golf. I am going to start golfing. I'm going to be wearing PXG. It's in your future. Elevate your style game on and off the course with PXG Spring Summer 2024 Collection. Head over to pxg.com slash fks and save 10% on all apparel. That's pxg.com slash fks to save 10% on apparel. pxg.com slash fks. Number four. Number four. Trigger warning on this next one, you guys. The story does contain talks of sexual offenders and child pornography. Dear Dad, Morgan, and Justin, thank you for such an incredible podcast and giving fatherly advice. I have a dilemma. I'm not sure who to go to, and I'm hoping you can help. Put your seatbelt on for this one. It sounded like you shit your pants. No, I went... <laughs> Even worse. To pull, I pull those little straps. shardy. He is a little shardy. Yeah, There's no shards. Shardy. You, go, you better go check your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm weird tonight. <laughs> okay, back to the story. Let's go. This is a serious one. So uh, let's get go. it together, guys. My 30 female and husband, 33 male, just bought our dream home last July. We spent several years looking and saving, and we are so excited to find a home with four acres of land. In November, meeting the couple neighbors we have, there are only four houses in walking distance around us, our neighbors across the street casually mentioned our other neighbor. Let's call him Jim. He lives in a home behind our house and is a registered sex offender. They didn't offer much information, but said Jim was a good guy and didn't hold it against him. At this point, we've already spent several nights with our neighbors and they were all at our housewarming party in September. Once we got home, my husband and I looked up information online about Jim. He was in prison from 2008 to 2016 for multiple child pornography charges and I am sick to my stomach. I haven't spoken to Jim or his fiance since, and let my husband communicate with them if needed. My current dilemma is that we host roughly two to three large parties 
every year. When we moved in, we told all of our neighbors that they are welcome whenever we throw a party. However, now with this information, I'm not sure what to do. My husband wants to keep this knowledge a secret from our family with the understanding that Jim served his time in prison. I, on the other hand, have a much harder time forgiving a crime like that. Many people that come to our parties have children, about 10 to 15 kids, and I'm concerned about what would happen if they ever found out what Jim did and we never told them. I absolutely hate feeling responsible for another man's actions like this and feeling so unresolved about how to handle it. My husband and I also don't have any kids yet, and this is a huge concern for me in the future. I'm not sure if we should have a conversation with him directly, just make our family aware. I am amazed that no one brought to your attention before you moved in that you there was a sex offender. Yeah. Right in you know in your backyard. You might be able to go after the sellers and realtor for non-disclosure and sue for damages go because ahead. is that I'm I mean I'm sure it's some sort of thing. It I, does but, depend on the state, but they are legally required, depending on the to, laws, to disclose it. To disclose certain things. Like in in, you know, this state, you have to disclose a death in the home within a certain number of years. You have to disclose people that are registered within a certain number of miles. So each Except state varies. Except when you're a renter and there was a mass murder in the house. They Renting, legally, they don't have to disclose. If they're selling, they have to make those disclosures. Yes. Renting is kind of a loophole. But I was just speaking from my experience yeah. how sometimes it's weird where what gets disclosed. Yeah, no, and what they doesn't. bought. They bought. So yeah. they should have had those disclosures. So that's number one. Number two, in 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 light of that, um, now we're gonna go to the next step. You have friends come over, you must disclose it. You must tell the people that I bought a house. We did not know at the time we bought it. And we are not, and, and we, we, we want you to be aware what we have in our, in, in our backyard. Yeah. That's number two. The fact that he is served his time, that doesn't mean he, we don't know what he's had for therapy. We don't know anything else. He is on a register you have a you you have information. You are responsible yourself to tell your friends. And if they should not choose to come visit you because of it, now you got two more choices. One, move. And number two, maybe go try to seek some remedy from the people that sold you the house because they're not going to make the guy move. He's got the ability of living there. It's so his house. It's his yeah. rights. So it it is a difficult thing. You know, I know what I would do. What I'm out of there. Do? I'm out of there. I'm moving. Yeah. I, 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 if I want my kids to come around, I am just not going to subject them, themselves to that kind of danger because I'm already aware <sighs> on how many people in this in, in in our in our society get abused, and the counts are crazy. What's tough though is they could sell this house, which you know they say is their dream house. They could buy another one and move somewhere else. What's to stop their neighbors from selling to someone who's also on a list? You you never know what you're going to get. Like there's always this risk. At least now you know what you have and you have four acres. Maybe you really, de you know, decide if you want privacy fences, if he can see into your backyard. There's things you can do, but I, I wholeheartedly agree. You need to tell the people in your life especially the people coming over with kids. Because mm -hmm. what if it's one of those things? Before like, they come over with their kids. Exactly. But it's like one of those things where it's like Jim's outside with a new puppy. Hey, you guys want to come see the puppy? Oh my God, everyone sees the puppy. They run over. You don't want them interacting. And so you just need to make sure everyone in your life is aware. Yeah. It, 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 it's a sucky deal. Really sucks. The, the realtor should have should have done due diligence and disclose this. And if the laws in your state do not require it, that's just bullshit. Yeah, there's just a little bit extra. Jim and his fiance are in their 50s. The home was originally his mother's and then given to him. They aren't planning on moving and his fiance had kids in a previous marriage and grown adults all out of the house. Uh, they never have visitors to their house and he's gone to work 
uh, Monday, Friday, until about 6 p.m. every night. They're quite good neighbors. His fiance is sweet. We had great first impressions when we met. I'm really just not sure where to go from here. And I mean, our writer here did look up, you know, the crime, whatever information was public. You know, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah, he did serve eight years, which seems pretty serious, but I don't know, maybe he's been rehabilitated properly and is now, you know, redeemable, but we don't know. We don't know. There's a lot of context missing and yep. you just have to make the best of it and protect yourself and protect your people. You know, when just, you, yeah. when you were a child and people wanted to, you were going to go you know, hang out with people or go to grandpa's or whatever, I, I was terrified wherever you went. I mean, <laughs> I did. You have to be very careful I, with your kids. I was very protective of you. A lot of times, people who commit those crimes against children are people you know. You know, they're close friends, like good acquaintances, family. So you you have to be diligent when you have kids, and it's you know unfortunate our writer now has to worry about that. Like, what if me and my husband have kids? What are we gonna do? And it's, it's tough. It's just ending up in those situations where you have to deal with something without ever causing. ever doing anything wrong. Yeah. It just takes one bad experience to affect someone for the rest of their life. Yeah. And it, it's tough. You just, it's tough enough. Cause we don't know when they go to children's houses that are neighbors and stuff. You never know. And you you do the best you can. But if you have knowledge, you've certainly got to make sure that everyone is aware. Just to most importantly, get you from being exposed for not telling them. Yeah, you got to tell them. Hands down. That's yeah. non-negotiable. Don't leave your people in the dark because I would stop being friends with someone for not telling me that mm -hmm. information. Yeah. I, I wouldn't stand for it. You, you know, gotta tell Why people, didn't you tell us? Right. You could have prevented blah, 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 blah. Like, just tell your people. And if they don't want to come over. They'll say, let's come to our house. We'll do the party here. that's just the reality. Yeah, you guys might not be able to be the hosts anymore. And that's, it just is what it is. Sorry. Okay. Last but not least. Let's go. This is number six. Five. Number five. I like the way I did that. Number five. Yeah, I'm weird today. Five. What's with me? You are a little goofy. Okay, so this next story is actually a year old. Yeah. But Justin felt that it is still like a story that could be relevant to a lot of people. And so we're still going to read it. And I hope you're listening still and will send us an update. Yeah. But let's get into it. Hi, Jerry and or Morgan. Or Justin. Or Holly. No, no Holly. Holly. No Holly. It's currently 3 a.m. while I'm typing this, all while my fiancé is asleep in the other room. The situation is that I, female, 23, had an ex, male, 23, in high school. Graduated 2017. We dated at 17. He was an okay boyfriend, but we broke things off after graduation. Obviously, as a 17-year-old, I was heartbroken but got over it after a few months and met my now fiancé, male 24. Every now and then, I would check up on him on shared social media until I got blocked. No idea why I got blocked. So after that, I forgot about checking up and eventually changed my social media handles, etc. Now, four years after all of that, I had my contacts resync into a new tablet I bought and found his number. I think it would be super weird and very awkward to be like, hey, it's my name, your ex from 2017, in a text. I don't have any feelings towards him, whether it's romantic or hate, but I really do want to be friends with the guy. From what little he told me, a red flag I didn't notice until later years, about his family life, his mom and dad were really incompatible but stayed married for their kids, so they lived life separately. His dad is also really conservative and his mom is the opposite. And knowing him, he would probably be more like his mom since his dad was a lot more absent than his mom, who did show up to his and his brother's graduation. So back to me finding his number again. I decided to do a reverse search and see if he was still going to school in the same school as another friend. And I found his new address, but he has the same number. 
The new address is five minutes away from my dad's house. I know the chances are slim to none of me ever encountering him. I know I don't have the courage to send him a text either. What I would like advice on is, am I crazy for doing that reverse search? Am I weird for still wanting to be friends? Should I even go to my dad's this weekend knowing all of this info? To me, this all seems like stalker behavior and I should put a stop to it and just forget it all again. But at the same time, I feel like everyone deserves another chance to be friends. And I also haven't had luck with finding friends since I moved away from my old neighborhood that I've spent 10 plus years in. Any advice or face palms are appreciated. She's engaged, right? I heard the word fiance. Fiance. Yeah, that fiance word. I think you're opening a can of worms that you don't need to go down. This is simply the fact that you are not satisfied or doesn't sound like you're satisfied in your relationship and you're looking at an excuse to go crack this can open. So, you know, you got to make some decisions. If if you want to go take a stab at this thing and you're not happy in your relationship, then 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 settle settle your relationship first and then go take whatever risk you want to take with this other person. He may be inviting, he may not be inviting, but you're not taking advantage of your fiance. And if that's not the case of any of this and you're in love with your fiance, you don't need this guy. It would be one thing if you just bumped into, into him at the market and you said, mm -hmm. Dave, great to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. I'm now living in town. I live over here. Yeah. You know, are, what do you do for fun? Oh, I don't know. I play pickleball. Well, I like to play pickleball too. And, and my fiance, he's not into it, but let's play pickleball. Or he'll say, I love to play Catan. And you'll say, my fiance and I love to play Catan. Why didn't you come over and play with us? Whatever you do, that that this person is now going to be friends of both of yours. I I I have certainly have experience with exes, and I've always made sure that when I have an ex that that I'm friends with, that that if I'm with somebody, that everyone knows everybody, and there's no hidden agenda. That's the important thing because when there's a hidden agenda, then you got the agenda. Or you bump into them in Delta Security. That's also a possibility. I, just I missed... right there in the TSA line. Yeah, that was a little awkward. First of all, I'd like to just say. <laughs> this... Oh, you bumped into an ex at Delta Security? Yeah, but it's like, it was the ex, like we were friends with benefits for f four years. I don't know. It was a long situation ship, but um, he's the reason I actually realized how much I liked Justin. So if it wasn't for him, we might not be together. He's the key. He was like the good luck Chuck. He's good luck Chuck. He's good luck Chuck. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say. <laughs> Thank you, you, good luck Chuck. <laughs> you may think that this story doesn't fit the theme, but I was grasping at straws when I was trying to finish this one. And he lives five minutes from the dad. So Basically Neighbors. a neighbor, basically a neighbor, especially out in farm country, someone five minutes away, that's your damn neighbor. But I think on this story, love thy neighbor. This is a classic curiosity killed the cat situation mm -hmm. where I think once you found out you were blocked and you didn't have the access to the information that bugged you and kind of, you know, snowball affected itself into something that stayed in your mind and now you're turning it into this whole thing. But I think, I think it was the fact that you saw you were blocked and now you're like, why what's happening? You want to figure out the story and you almost want to connect because you can't see anything now. Right. It's, it's the yeah. curiosity of it. It must be. The whole thing is a little goofy to me. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the fact that you did get blocked it means he knew you were creeping on his stories, maybe pretty aggressively. And so he blocked you because he didn't want you to look at his stuff anymore. I would have taken that as the hint that he doesn't want me in his life anymore. Mm -hmm. Like for someone to block you, and I get some people do it very casually, but for me, for me to block someone or for me to get blocked by someone, that's like a very serious thing. That is like you want to not exist on the same planet as me anymore. It could not be the case 
for you. Could be different. But I would say then like, oh, you got a new tablet and you put your contacts in and you happen to find his number. I don't know how you just happened upon it. Like to me, it seems like you were scrolling through every number hoping you then still had his. I feel like you're really, really searching him out for no reason. There's no indication he wants to be friends. And I know in your ideal outcome, you say to either make a new old friend or to simply forget and put myself out there for new friends. He doesn't want to be friends. If he did, he would have unblocked you. He would have found a way to make that known. It is time to put yourself out there and make new friends, delete his number, block him on social media, pretend he doesn't exist. I think, you know, whatever he's going through with his family dynamic, I'm sure he's got friends. I'm sure, you know, he's good because otherwise he would have reached so, out. So let's go, let's take a different direction. Okay. We, we, let's just assume that this is not a healthy road and move on. Mm -hmm. Now, her next, how does she find new friends? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Because that's really the direction that I would go is, is I would, I, and I've said this in every show, go find some things that you like to do that you will meet people. I don't care if it starts at, at church bingo. But, I love bingo. That's but, a new one, Jerry. Oh my God. I love bingo so much. Bingo. Love it. So fun. So there, I mean, there are things that you can do and groups that you could be, you can become part of that you'll meet people, new friends, and you'll enjoy it. And look for things that are out there that you can become part of and active in. And you will meet a whole new group of people that you can hang with. And who knows? Maybe he's in one of these groups and you'll bump into him. Don't stalk him out to do it. Though. Don't set no. it up. Don't be the trigger. Let this fish go free. Unless you are really really prepared to lose your, your guy. Yeah. And, then yeah. The, and if that's the case, make the determinations before all this. So it's clean. Definitely. And if you love your guy, then don't go down this and because it's just no. it, in all reality, it's disrespectful to him at this point. Well, just the way that you're the, the way that you're formulating this thing. I, I, it, it's just fishy to me. Well, and we've had, you know, at the live shows, we ask people for hot takes and we've had some takes be, I think exes can be friends. Mm -hmm. And we've had people on the opposite side that say, I don't think exes can be it's friends. It's a hot topic. It's debatable. I just think this is so far removed. This is five years down the road, six years down the road now. Mm -hmm. And there's been no indication he wants to be friends. You have somewhat kind of stalked him in a way mm -hmm. doing the reverse search like it's fbi level it's creepy impressive creepy this is it, creepy you know i see a lot of tiktok videos of people doing crazy shit finding people so the fbi could recruit you but it's just one of those things like there's no indication and i get feeling lonely and wanting to have friends and obviously he would be an easy one because you have history but go out meet new friends Go to bingo, try things you like, go to a shelter, walk dogs, go on Bumble, BFF, whatever it is, but start putting yourself out there because you can't make new friends unless you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. So you got it, but block him, delete the number and move on. It is time. There we go. So that's our show for this week. Mm -hmm. Uh we had a good, we had a great week. It was a good week. And you and Justin are going over to Patreon now. Yes, we are. And next, right now. And next week, you guys are leaving town. Next week, we have our shows in Texas. So while they're listening to this show we Tuesday. We will be in Texas. Big state, Texas. Big state. <laughs> big place. I'm excited. Any recommendations, please comment on this YouTube. I see all the comments. So if you have any must-see, must-do things in Houston, Dallas, and Austin, let us know. I if would we have love. Time. Yeah, we are limited on time, but I would love good brunch spots. To be honest, mm, yeah. brunch brunch is something we've really struggled with on That's the tour call. so far. Yep. So brunch spots that are easy in those cities, don't need reservations. Send my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so long for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh man. What?
I was going to tell them about the themes I have. Oh, tell them about your themes. I just want to give you guys a sneak peek at some of the themes I put together with Justin tonight because they're so good and I want to get you guys excited. Okay, theme one. Theme one is passive aggressive question mark slash be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Two. This is going to be a two part episode because I found so many stories I popped in here and they're so good. Number two. Survival of the fittest slash surviving. Tough choice to make. And hang in there, love. Can so, I mention one eye of going? Oh, yeah. One eye of going is called getting fucked over. That's happened to us a lot recently. That's so. a theme? It's going to be. Is that number three? There we it's go. It's four or five or something. Okay. We got a lot of them in getting there. Getting fucked over. Yeah. Okay. We've, Feels good to say. Getting fucked over. If that hasn't been G our life F lately. G-F-O. <laughs> yep. G-F-O. There you go. Justin and, and I have been going through it. And what's D-D-D? Dump the dude. Or? Dump the dame. That's right. At the concert the other night, we were screaming, D-D-D. D -D. Dad, D -D. it's yes. not a concert. Oh, the show. Okay, bye guys.